Hi guys, Squirrel here, and welcome to my first look at Train Sim World CSX Heavy Haul Edition. This is a very early build. This is a pre-alpha build coming out a few days before uh, this releases to the people that bought the Pioneers Edition of Train Sim World. If you remember many moons ago, uh, you was allowed to buy the Pioneers Edition, and if you did, then you got access to this in December. I'm looking at a build here, a pre-alpha build, so this is very early footage. So let me just caveat this straight away and say what you're going to see is not necessarily what you're going to get. This is an early access look. It is not necessarily representative of the final build of Trains in World CSX Heavy Hall. All that kind of disclaimer out the way. This is not an advert. I'm not being paid. They have given me a key to take a look at it, and I'm going to give you a look at it. I'm not going to give you an opinion on it because this is nowhere near the final game, but I'm just going to show you what the game's like as it stands right now. I hope we're very clear on that because I don't want to see any comments about, oh, you've been paid, blah, blah, blah. That's not the case. This is not an ad. This is just an early look. I'm going to show you quickly the, the interface. The settings is down here on this little cog. Let's show you quickly the settings. You've got notifications, uh, screenshot quality. I'll put that on high. Uh, disable derailing and junctions. Uh, we've got gamepad controls where you can set the various uh, controller layouts. You've got the keyboard controls, which you can quickly spin through. A lot of these are very similar to um, Train Sim, Train Simulator. You'll see like the automatic brake increase, uh, the reverse of positions, but there are some differences uh, in some of the, the keyboard mappings. Uh, you've got the camera invert, camera speed, whether you want a quick walk. Under display, I've got 1080 full screen ultra TAA VSync on, so I've basically maxed everything out there. And then these are the controls you get under the sound. Now, in terms of what you actually get out the box at the moment, there are uh, three tutorials that you can play through. You can't customize any of this stuff at all, as I can tell right now. I've been through the tutorials. You've also got um, scenarios you can play through. There's a couple at the moment, Sand Patch Summit and Clear Cut, which you can do. Again, you have no control over these here. And then finally, there's this services thing. Um, in services, you can do what's called spawn walking. Uh, where you can, basically what it says on the tin, you can go at any part of the route and then freely walk around. I'm not going to show you that because I'm kind of going to show you it anyway by doing this. Uh, this is what we're going to look at. This is the uh, the SD40-2. This is an EMD 645E3 loco, diesel electric locomotive from General Motors. We're going to look at this one. This is the only loco uh, in the game at the moment. And uh, I'm going to get in it. We're going to go on a scenario and I'm going to configure... Uh, the weather, which it allows us to configure. Now, we can't slide these around at the moment, but we can choose the preset. We've got sunny morning, uh, we've got a, a rainy afternoon, and, and obviously straight away you can see the representative graphics here. This shows you what it will look like, which is quite nice actually seeing a preview, but you can see like the wet reflection. This is the Unreal Engine coming in now. Uh, we've got the summer evening, which looks uh, well, rather nice actually. We've got the winter morning, which looks absolutely beautiful. Look at that. Very, very nice. We've got a snowstorm, uh, which, I mean, the actual look of it is nice. The snow looks a bit weird, but maybe that will change. Uh, winter fog, which is kind of like a mixture of um, of the winter morning and it with actually looks like the snow's not there, but it's kind of just misty. Uh, and then the sunny morning. So I think we'll go with winter fog. I think that looks really, really nice. Uh, looks like a really frosty winter's day. So yeah, uh, well, let's start this scenario and then I'll show you around the, the loco and the carriages and we'll just take a drive. That's what we're going to do today. Okay, we are in the train. We're in the loco right now. And uh, straight away, first thing to look at is the HUD down the bottom right there. Uh, you can see some information. We've obviously got the speed. We've got the clock in the middle. We've got the speedometer going around it. The state of the reverser. Uh, you'll see when I start applying power, you see the power come up and the brake pressure and all that kind of thing. But also, if you press the F1 key, it kind of gets rid of the HUD. And you can have a look and you can see what the graphics are like. And I'm going to get up out of my seat now. So I'm going to press the E key. And we're going to get up out of our seat, which is one nice thing that you can do. And you can just basically look around like this. 
What's actually cool is the amount of stuff that you can press uh, when you're in this mode. If we put the HUD back on, then you can see you get this little cursor here that you can use to click things. And even so far, the detail is such that you can open the fuse cabinet like that. And you can click on the main circuit breakers if you want. I'm not going to do this because it's going to shut the loco down probably. I'm not even going to do this. I want to actually drive the loco and show you what's going on. But I just want to show you this as a kind of a heads up that it does appear, and I haven't tested any of these, but it does appear that there's a lot of detail in here. It looks like all the systems have been modeled. And, you know, if I flick these switches, which I'll do some other time, but not today, if I flick these switches, I would expect things to happen like if I flick that it would turn the headlights off because I've just broke the fuse on the circuit board um, so that's that and then up here you've got the emergency fuel cutoff you've got other things here um, breakers for the engine room lights that kind of thing there's a display headlight control isolation switch it's even the texture is even so good that you can actually read it on here look at that you can actually read the instructions there's a lot of detail here look at this very very cool they must have gone inside one of these things and just photographed every last detail of this thing these don't open um that doesn't do anything you can actually sit in in these seats which is which is awesome i mean it's completely pointless but it does make me wonder could you actually have a situation where i could i could play a scenario with a friend and he could be sitting there i could sit in here and you know just kind of open the window and just enjoying the view and then we could swap over I don't know it does make me wonder if that's even going to be possible over here we've got things like the Sun visor which operates uh, the wipers are particularly interesting if I can uh, find the operator for the wiper where is that now here it is so when you hold down the mouse button you get like a, a slider and you can physically move the wiper like that so you can physically move it uh, if you sit down in the driver's seat you can of course operate them as well, the vine is over here. So everything basically works. It's a bit like, you know, being in an OMSI bus, this. Uh, yes, you can open the door. You're probably wondering, can I go outside? Well, let me show you something. I can open the door. I can walk outside here. Look at that. For the very first time in Train Simulator, I can actually get out and walk around and look at what's going on. And yep, I can even climb down onto the track and look at this beautiful loco. Look at that. This actually... What, the fact that I can do this is just... Oh, it's just so breathtaking. I mean, all the connector hoses are here. Everything is modeled in detail. I'm going to show you something in a bit. Which I'll go around the back to show you. But what, what I just want to show you right now is not only the, the detail and the look... The graphics are amazing, but actually, what's going on underneath? I mean, look at the look at the way this has been modelled. There's like a lot of intricate detail here has been modelled. This is absolutely incredible. And when we drive the loco, when we move in a second, you'll see the wheels actually turn. Like everything visually operates, and not only that. I'm going to show you in a bit when we start moving. These linkages actually physically connect. So when that thing starts to haul, you'll see the tension between these um, as they separate and come back together again. And you can even, look at this, this is how you disconnect trains in this game. You physically do that, you get out the loco, you disconnect it there. There's none of this kind of bringing up a menu and clicking on a, a, a disconnect. You get out the thing, you come over here, you pull this lever and disconnect and drive away. We put that back. So that's pretty cool. Uh, and then down the back here, we've got two locos today. I think these are all coal. Uh, and yes, you can get up here. You can get onto the second loco. It doesn't restrict you. Crossing closed. It restricts me there. But it doesn't restrict me from getting on the second loco. Uh, I can walk around this thing. I can get up here. I can open the door of the second loco. Get in the back. Uh, sit down. You know, it doesn't. it doesn't stop me from doing this. It just lets me do it. And it's... That in itself is just amazing. Get back out. And then you've got the actual uh, Coles things themselves. Climb up ladder. E. Okay, it's not letting me do that yet. I'm pressing E, but it's not letting me do it. It seems to be restricting me. Which is a real shame. I would love to climb up there and just have a look inside. 
Uh, but you can see the actual detail on the carriages as well is beautifully modelled. And even as, as we walk around, listen to this. That kind of crunchy snow. And notice the engine noise as we move away. We're parked across a crossing here. We can walk back into the town. And you can see we're kind of holding up the show here. Big time. But look at the lighting. Look at their fog effects. There's even a guy... I am suspect we're going to get blocked here. Yeah, we're going to get blocked. So, you know, it's not complete free world exploration. Wow. It's not complete free world exploration, but within the track area, you're you're kind of free to move around about your, your train. Let's get back inside and drive this thing. But I just wanted to kind of give you a taste of the freedom that you get, uh, the audio, and, the, and basically the physical aspects of these, the design of this thing. They're super, super detailed. Very cool. Right, so let's get back in. And I'll show you around the actual train a bit more. Shut the door. Okay, so we press E. We'll sit in the driver's seat there. Uh, now, if we press the 2 key, uh, that gives us an external view. And it's it's basically a follow camera. So it's going to follow the loco. But I can move with the cursor keys. I can kind of move around like this. And then it will follow the front. And I press the 3 key. Okay, we're inside for some reason. If I press the 3 key, uh, it's going to follow the back like this. As you can see, it's not actually full of coal. It should be. Oh, camera keeps snapping inside. I think there's a little bug there. I do wonder, though, when you... Does this open the world up so that we could pull underneath various places and these things would get filled and we can watch them filling up? Because that would be pretty awesome. Well, I don't know why the camera keeps doing that. Uh, as I get too close, it kind of snaps inside. Like I say, I think that's a bug, so we'll just ignore that for now. Uh, if I press the 9 key, it's going to give me a route map. And uh, again, you can kind of see how detailed this track... Look at the amount of track here. Good grief. Uh, so that's a 9 key. And then I think the 8 key uh, gives you a free view camera so that you can just fly around anywhere you like and take a look at this, well, frankly... Awesome looking scenery. Right, well, let's drive. Um, so, what we do, we're going to move forward. So, 4.7 kilometers forward is what we need to do. Uh, these things are all clickable. Everything here is completely clickable. Uh, there are, the headlights are already on. We'll put the reverser in, like that. We'll start to throttle up a bit, and then we'll release the brake. Now, I'm just going to go external because I want to show you something as we begin to accelerate. I have to excuse the camera snapping. Good grief. What I want to actually show you is in between here as we begin to accelerate. Look at the cables. Look at the hoses there. Now, notice it's, it's actually rolling backwards because we're on an incline. But as I throttle up, Can you see the movement between the loco and the carriage? There's actual physics going on here. And not only that, but the cables swing around as well, and the wheels are turning. Oh my god, that camera bug is doing my head in. I just... <laughs> just let me view. Oh, it keeps snapping me inside if I get too close. But you get the idea of what I'm trying to say. The detail is very much there. Like the cables kind of swing around. Everything is as it should be. Everything works fine inside. It's just outside that, that camera is, is a bit weird. But if you look at the detail here as well, you know, we can operate it. I can operate it with the keys, but you can easily operate it just by throwing these switches. Uh, everything's modeled. I don't know what the field generator does, control pump does. I've not even looked at the manual for this thing at all. Uh, I would hope that all this stuff works as well as comms test. Don't know, maybe. The horn definitely works. And the bell. So we've got that. While this thing is moving, you can press the E key, get up and walk around, open the door. And while you're driving the train, you can physically go and stand at the front. So, I mean, 
th this is complete freedom. This is amazing. And yeah, you can probably get off there, I imagine. Actually, it won't let me get off the train, which is probably sensible. Uh, but I can, you know, get up and walk around and do stuff. If I press the left and right arrow keys... Oh, there's another train. Look at that. Now, that looks pretty awesome. Listen to the carriages, though. I'll jump to the back in a minute, and the acoustics are superb. Uh, yeah, if you press the left arrow, if you notice this mirror here, it actually works, but when I bring the mirror in, it stops working, so I think that needs to be sorted out. Uh, left arrow again, keep pressing left arrow, and you can see it basically cycles through various internal cameras, like that. I've got an alarm, which is cute, clear that down. Anyway, let's pick up some speed, because we need to get a move on here. But yeah, listen to this now. We're at the back of the train. And all you can hear is like the carriages clanging together, the wheels, the chains, the linkages, everything. And then back at the front, you get all the engine noise. So the acoustics are back on. The view is amazing. Look at that. And then, you know, if you decide... You want to get a screenshot, you can kind of hold over here, press the F1, Control F12, like that, and it'll take a screenshot for you. So you can get these beautiful kind of idyllic screenshots. And that's why I wanted to put it on winter and kind of misty, because I think it just looks genuinely amazing. The only thing I can't see right now is what the track speed is. Um, but I can stick my head out the window and just look for the signs. But normally, you know, like with, with Train Simulator, you get the thing across the bottom, it shows the track layout, the speeds, the um, the light signalling, everything like that. There's none of that that I can find. I don't know if it's planned to be in the game or not, whether it's just not in there or I can't find it, I don't know. But it would be kind of nice to see what, what the routing is. Or at least what the track speed is, because I haven't got a clue. You can see I'm putting more power in now, the ampage meter comes up. And this thing, because of the because of the uh, carriages on the back and the linkage between them all, this thing feels so heavy. When you start moving it around, it genuinely feels heavy. What a view! Oh, there's some signaling. So the signaling, you can actually. When you walk around the track, you can actually walk around and get and go to the bottom of this signalling here. Uh, you can't climb up the ladder, but you can actually see. Um, it is, it's just so authentic. It's The build of this thing is just like real life in a way. It's, it's all modelled correctly. You can walk up to it and look at it. It's fantastic. Also, you can um, there are switches on the ground that you can manually operate. In fact, one of the, uh, the, the tutorials... Let's get back inside. One of the uh, freight tutorials actually has you uh, doing that. Uh, you you have to sort of get your loco, drive some some uh, carriages along the track. I'm not sure that stopped for. Drive some carriages along the track. Get out. Uh, walk over. Throw the switch on the floor to to move the track over. And um, and then get back in your loco. And this is physically get in and out of your logo, and then you know reverse the the carriages back, connect them to some new ones by getting out, linking them together, throwing the lever like I showed you before, and then getting your logo and drive off. It's it's proper genuine stuff. I think we're throwing a bit more power at this point. But um, in terms of the experience at this point, and like I say, this is an early build. Right now, it feels pretty genuine, you know? It feels pretty authentic. I assume this is not properly optimised yet, but it's behaving pretty well. I can kind of feel like they've got some more optimization work to do, but it's probably got all manner of debug code in it and stuff. Hence my, you know, my caveats here. But right now, this is... Um... Oh, did you hear that? When we went under the bridge, the engine acoustic changed. It, it really does feel pretty nice. I hope we go through a tunnel. Because I want to see what it's like when we go through a tunnel here. 
Reward earned, drove 10 kilometers, earned 2,500 XP. So it looks like they've got some kind of um, career system built in where you earn XP. I don't know what it contributes to. Maybe you're just like a driver level or something. I did see something on the main menu about a driver level. What I'm happy about is the texturing in this is very, very authentic. It's, it's gritty, it's dirty, it's used. It all looks very authentic. It's kind of taken it... I think it's taken things a notch towards flight simulation level of detail, you know? In terms of all the buttons being clickable, you know, once the systems are operable... And a lot of this stuff was was didn't even do anything in Train Simulator. I mean, I can't... PTT, I can click these things. You know, I want these systems to be operational. I want them to do things. And I really hope that um, that they've put that in the game. Because Train Simulation does deserve to be more realistic, a lot more like the flight simulators are, and this is a really, really good start. This is this is pretty exciting, quite frankly. The freedom you get, though, just the freedom to look around your loco is just... Listen to this. And as I kind of look around, the acoustics change as well. Let's go to the back. See, now back here, all you can hear is carriages being dragged along. There you go. Look at the cables kind of swaying around. Look at the wheels turning. Look at the shadows on the ground. The tree shadows that we're getting. The carriage shadows that we're getting. Everything is just very, very authentic. Absolutely superb, quite frankly. Okay. We're about to pass some kind of a marker. Go via sand patch, it says. Uh, this bit here, I've been and walked around uh, in one of those walkthrough things. So I've walked down here on a summer's day. And you can just run around. In fact, around the back of that building there, I picked up a, a hat or something. And it said, congratulations, hat one of 20 collected. So... It seems they've, they've kind of put a little bit of Pokemon in there, a little bit of um, encouraging you to walk around the map, I guess. There's obviously hats that you can collect. I don't know what you get. Maybe some XP or something. Which, yeah, it's a little bit of fun. It's fine. Look at the modelling on the left here. Look at these rock, that rock face itself. There's detail. Oh, we're getting in a tunnel. Look at this. We are in a tunnel, let's get rid of that. Okay. So I can see a white light at the end of the tunnel. Let's get on the back here. Uh oh. I think I've just activated an emergency system. Wow, that thing stopped fast. Rip. Oh well. Doesn't matter. Let's put the reverser into neutral forward yeah it's the alert button there you see when I press the Q key I'm not sure how to reset this I know there's a key for the for the parking brake it might have engaged no we're moving we're moving let's give it more welly okay we're on we'll go we'll go moving at last. Yeah, I, I wondered if there was like a parking brake, but I'm not really sure what the procedure was after the emergency stop. But we appear to be moving again. So I just basically reset the reverser and put it on max brake and then released it and started to throttle up and everything seemed to be hunky-dory. Um, but as I was saying, inside the tunnel, I think the lighting of this will be better if there wasn't so much bloom around that entrance. So hopefully they can dial that down. But other than that, it seems to be working quite nicely. It's pretty hard to see what the headlights are like out the front of this train to see. I'd have to put it on a night scenario to get a proper feel for that. But other than that, the inside of the tunnel is the detail. It's not just like a black thing. It's actually modelled pretty well. So that's promising. 
right, let's pick up some speed. Now, I do need to keep my eye on that alert thing. Uh, because I think it's a bit like the the driver's alert system. Like, if I don't operate any controls, it's going to start beeping. And if I don't clear it, it's just going to hit the emergency switch on me. And then I'm going to be braking again pretty fast, like I just did. Let's get out of this tunnel. Right, we've got another waypoint coming up in one kilometre. Let's get external camera. Can't find a way to make the camera go up. I have to keep kind of looking. I can use the arrow keys, but I can't go vertically up and downwards. I have to sort of look down and then head in that direction. I don't know if there is a key to do it or whether I just haven't found it. What is that on the right? There's a lot of detail on the track side as well, if you're noticing. There's lots of little things going on uh, the signaling is here but you've also got like vehicles and just bits of sidings and roadside stuff like cables and things it's not you know bland let me put it that way it is i'm gonna stop at mans where's mans 1.2 kilometers okay we're gonna start slowing down there's a lot of detail You just get back to uh, that view. There we go. Okay, let's start bringing some brake pressure in. Because I honestly don't know how long this thing's going to take to, to slow down. Actually, what? how can we stop over there? Unless we're about to make a very, very tight corner. Kind of looks like we're about to do. I tell you what, the view from here though is <laughs> it's so, it's so small. Good grief, these poor drivers! Look like these tiny little windows. It's like trying to drive a car by looking through a letterbox. It's ridiculous. Okay, three hundred meters, thirty-five miles per hour. I have no idea what the braking distances are. This thing looked like it just stopped pretty fast. Wow. I tell you what, this thing can slow down. That was surprising. Look at the blue smoke. Look at that. Absolutely magnificent. Yeah, so we're supposed to be stopping here. Try and walk these cameras. Okay. Don't know which part is supposed to stop. I'll take it, that's okay. Uh, reward earned, completed the task and timetable. Uh, XP awarded 5,000 apparently. Look at that. Where next? Main menu. Why do you give me a choice of one? So yeah, the, the other thing is the, the walk around mode where you can click on this and then you can say, right, let's go for a walk around. And, um, you know, do you want it sunny, rainy? Let's go for a walk in the rain. Actually, let's go for a walk in the summer evening. That sounds nice. And then it'll say, right, where do you want to go? And a lot of this stuff is not actually uh, customizable just yet. I can't change all these different times of day, but I can basically pick where I want to go and then jump in. And when it's finished loading. Okay, forums.dovetailgames.com gives you a quick start guide. Um, but here you go. When you're here... Crunchy gravel hype. Look at this. Now, can you imagine scenarios that involve this thing? Where you've got to drive in, spin it around. Like, you maybe come out of one of those garages over there. I mean, is there a way to operate this? It's not operable yet. I don't know if it ever will be. I can go inside though. Hang on. Turntable locked. Turntable unlocked. 
Oh my god. <laughs> this thing works! Wow. Camera. No way, even the camera works. That's hilarious. What does this do? The detail is amazing. So yeah, look at this. So we've got a situation here where we've got a giant turntable which really does unlock the doors for some pretty interesting scenarios. And you're kind of free to look around, you know, within certain boundaries. There will be another hat around here somewhere that will have been hidden. Like the Pokemon, if you want to collect them all. But yeah, it's got this kind of walk-around mode, scenario mode, and some tutorials, but I don't know how many will be available on release. You can't go into these buildings, by the way, you might be wondering. I don't know how many will be available on release, but... It's even left as a train here, look at this. So, you know, we could get inside this probably and drive it, I guess. Yep. We could start this thing up from cold and dark. Oh yeah, look, the instrument lights work as well. See that? But they're not just lit up. Look at the genuinely kind of lit up, like the four little bulbs like it used to be. Everything is just, I don't know, authentic. Anyway. I think that's enough for a first look video. Um, that's Train Sim World CSX Heavy Hall. This is a, let me iterate again, this is a pre-release version. Um, but I am really liking what I'm seeing so far. And I hope you do too. Here's one of the signals, by the way. Uh, sorry, not the signals, switches. So you can see the position of it is, is like in red. And then when you throw that, you can see the, the track actually moves. So this is how you reroute things yourself. You've got to get out and do it manually. You've got to get inside that and turn it. You've got to throw these switches and turn things. Everything is just super cool. But I shall leave it there. I shall bring you more at some other date. Um, that's it from me. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video, guys. Take care. Le let me comments. Let me know what you think. Happy training.